Stone Age is a beautifully executed introduction to worker placement games from designer Michael Tummelhofer and Rio Grande Games. In Stone Age, players master the resources and culture of their Stone Age village in order to earn victory points. It plays out in about an hour and a half and supports from two to four players. There's also one expansion, Style is the Goal, which adds new rules, new resources, new huts, and a fifth player. So at the start of Stone Age, each player gets five people tokens of their chosen color on their personal board, as well as 12 food. The rest of the food, the dice, and the rest of the people tokens are placed beside the main board. The main board has resources, tools, and house tiles on it. Each player takes one of their cube tokens and places it at the beginning of the food track and another one at the beginning of the scoring track. Finally, four civilization cards are laid face up on the board. Now the game ends when one of those stacks of building tiles is empty, or if there aren't enough civilization cards left to fill up all of the empty spaces at the start of a new round. Once the game's over, the player with the most victory points is the winner. Each round is divided into three phases, worker placement, actions, and feeding your people. Each of those phases takes place in turn order and the starting player changes each round. During the worker placement phase, players take turn putting their people tokens in the action spaces of the main board. Now on your turn, you can place your tokens in one area and their number is limited by the amount of available spaces. There's two exceptions, the hunting ground, which has no limit at all, and the hut, which requires exactly two tokens. Now you can't place any more tokens in an area that you've placed tokens on in earlier turns, even if there's room left. Once every player has put all of their people tokens on the board, then the action phase begins. So in turn, everyone resolves all of the actions that they've chosen on the main board. The field allows you to move your cube one up on the food track. The hut allows you to take one extra people token from the supply. The Toolmaker lets a player add a tool to one of the three spaces on their player board. Tools have different values and they're going to help boost a roll that you make to either collect resources or food. To collect a resource or food, a player rolls as many dice as they have people tokens in the area that they're choosing. They then can choose to add the value of one tool on their personal board to their total. Then, they divide their total by the value of the resource they're collecting, and the values of resources are laid out on your board. The result, that final score, is the amount of resources that you receive from that area. Those resources are going to be used to buy buildings and civilization cards, both of which earn you victory points. Now, a building is bought for the resource cost that's listed on the lower half of its card, it's placed on your personal board, and it immediately grants the number of victory points that are listed in its upper left. Civilization cards are bought for the resource cost that's shown above their board space. The top half of that civilization card is going to give you an immediate reward, so tools or resources for instance. The bottom half gives you victory points at the end of the game. The amount of victory points that you get depends on how you combine those civilization cards, either with each other or with your houses, your people, or your tools, etc. Once every player has taken all of their actions, it's time to feed your people. Each player collects extra food, depending on their position on the food track, and then each player has to pay one food token for every person in their village. If you don't have enough food, then you can spend resources at an exchange rate of one to one, and if you don't have enough food or resources to feed your people, then you immediately lose 10 victory points. After everyone has been fed, new building tiles are turned over, and new civilization cards are put on the board to replace the ones that have been taken. Then a new round begins. So probably the most striking thing about Stone Age is just the beauty of its execution. This is a game that does a better job than any other I've seen of integrating its theme into its very components, from the wooden dice and the leather dice cup to the background images on the food tokens. It's really just gorgeous. That doesn't mean that that's all there is to it though. This is a game that has a good amount of strategic depth to it, and it works as a really, really nice gateway to more complex worker placement games like Agricola or Dungeon Pets, as well as a bridge between Settlers of Catan and more complex strategy games. Now one potential drawback of that simplicity and accessibility it's got is that the actions can get a little bit repetitive towards the end of the game just because not that much changes internally. There's no surprises, no new reveals really like that. So you just kind of got to keep playing out your strategy. But it's not a very long game so it's not going to be too much of a burden. 
So another potential con to Stone Age is the randomness element that's introduced by the dice. If you're a really keen strategy player, that might irritate you a little bit because you're trying to, to make this long-term strategy and plan out all of your rounds, and the rolling of the dice is going to throw a little bit of that out the window. However, that randomness also evens out the game quite a bit. So if you are a beginning player and you're playing with a bunch of people who've played this game a lot, they're not going to just blow you out of the water because you've got that leveling element added by the rolling of the dice. Also, this game is really easy to learn, but the strategy is great. It's got a lot of depth to it. There's a lot of different paths to victory, so you can choose a different way to approach your goal every time you play it, which is great. I love Stone Age. It's, it's a new game for me, and I think it's fantastic.